Good afternoon, Manitoba. Welcome to this special edition of Food and Friends. I am Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Normally, our show's on every Saturday morning from 8 to 9. Because of the holiday, we're here today. So join us next Saturday as well. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your weekend so far, and thanks for tuning in. And I just want to give you a real quick update on Manitoba-grown vegetables that are currently available. All right, here we go. Manitoba-grown beets, broccoli, kale, cucumbers, cauliflower, zucchini, green, red, and savoy cabbage, carrots, and cucumbers are all now available at your store. And the carrots have just started being harvested this weekend, so they may be in the store on uh, Tuesday or something, but they'll, the rest of the crops will be in there now. And starting to be harvested by the end of this week, peak of the market, leeks, pickling onions, jalapeno peppers, and corn on the cob, which is one of my favorites. So when you visit your local store, please support locally grown products. And as always, if it says peak of the market on the label, you know it's grown right here in Manitoba. My guest this afternoon is Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. Good afternoon, Sandy. Good afternoon, Larry, and thank you for having me here this afternoon. Well, thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. And you've been on the show uh, once before, and we had a great time, and the hour flew by. So we had this special edition of Food and Friends. We thought of you immediately. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for the free parking. <laughs> <laughs> it's always free at CJOB. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you have such an interesting background, and you're from Portage Prairie originally. Right agricultural background and grocery store. All uh, right. Fresh produce uh, my brother looked after in our grocery store. So you weren't the expert on Manitoba grown vegetables? Uh, we were big, big proponents of Manitoba grown and fresh vegetables, uh, and we still are. Except for now, we just uh, buy them in much smaller quantities than we used to. I guess so, eh? Yes. <laughs> so the real estate business you've been in for a long time? Yeah, well over 30 about 35 years now in the uh, commercial real estate business. And what have you seen change in that uh, time? The changes have been uh, dramatic, ranging from interest rates, affordability, mm -hmm. construction inflation, and more choice for the consumer. So the consumer's been the big winner, uh, certainly in my tenure in the real estate business, which is very popular. Uh, jobs. You know, real estate continues to be a place where everyone, most people who work, unless it's outside, are working in a building. Right. And that building is called real estate, whether it's an industrial plant like Peak of the Markets Warehouse and Office Space, uh, the retail shops that we uh, spend a lot of time developing, office buildings, etc. Most people spend some time in real estate every day. So, so when when I when Shelley and I travel, we've been through the states, and of course the states have been through a bad recession, as parts of Canada have. Manitoba has been affected, but certainly Ontario, you see it a lot more. A lot of empty commercial spots, a lot of empty warehouses and and stores. Is there, is that the case in Manitoba? Or our vacancy rate is relatively low, hmm. uh, but a lot of buildings are purpose built, and people have prototype sizes, and so sometimes you have a disconnect. Well, there may be demand for real estate. The demand may not be in that particular location or that particular size or some of the other attributes, functional attributes, may cause there to be a vacancy that isn't really derived by market. And you sometimes see uh, a big box store that's relocated or shut down for whatever reason. Those have got to be hard to find tenants for because there's big they're, space. They're and... difficult to retenant. They're difficult to subdivide. You know, with the modern fire codes and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the types of separation and the type of exposure you need, uh, things that are built for one tenant largely are for one tenant, and sometimes a demolition's what needed to uh, make better use of the site. Today, with all the uh, emphasis on multifamily development, uh, where we're going up with a little more density, a little more intensification, we're getting to the point where we can't afford to tear down buildings that may only be 10 or 15 years old and repurpose the site for something that the market demands today. So th this is kind of an unrelated question, but there's a restaurant that opened up up the street from where we live uh, in near Osborne Village. And, and I would have thought it would have been, there was an old restaurant there. I would have thought it would have been just better to tear the building down and start fresh. But they actually renovated it. I think spent a lot of time and energy on it. Is it 
because it's easier uh, to do that? Is it cheaper to do that? I know it's a bit of a vague question. Or is it something to do with zoning if they change the building? Probably zoning. Zoning, and, okay. And uh, they might not have been able to put the building back there. Ah. But there's no question that we've seen renovations that certainly approach the cost of new construction on a regular basis. Hmm. Because you would think almost sometimes it's just better to start scratch. Oh, sure, but <laughs> if they give you a setback from the lane or the sidewalk uh, or something, you may find that it, it, there isn't enough land there to actually put a restaurant back there. I see. Okay. So you're uh, you're not too much involved in uh, residential? It's mostly commercial? or We're getting more involved in residential in terms of multifamily. Uh, we have sites. We know, know that mixed use is really in vogue and in demand by the public at large, people want to be able to stroll to uh, amenities, groceries, restaurants, coffee shops, etc., as a form of entertainment and a form of convenience. So we're looking at adding uh, residential to many of our commercial uh, properties and hmm. near proximity to them. Uh, we're starting to put a focus on that, and you'll see a focus at least from Shindico in 2015 and beyond into the residential multifamily business. So is that, would that be like where there's stores on the bottom and uh, condos above? In some or case. In some cases, okay. But, you know, that would be a true mixed-use building, and okay. we're more talking about a mixed-use development. Oh, okay. Because it's not always the case that uh, it works well, having a retail or a restaurant sharing the ventilating or the garbage or the parking. Right. So we want to make sure that everybody has a comfortable enjoyment. We'll be right back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico, after this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Food and Friends Radio is now on TV. Each radio show is filmed and will be posted on mytoba.ca probably tomorrow. I was going to say later this weekend, but it's Monday, so it'll be later tomorrow. So if you want to watch uh, previ- uh, the TV version of this or previous radio shows, please visit mytoba.ca. Thanks to 680 CJOB's Nicole, who produces our show, and Chad, who operates the camera, as well as the teachers at the Broadcasting and Media Arts Program at Tech Fock High School. You can also listen to an audio podcast to Food and Friends at soundcloud.com or at the iTunes store. So all you need to do is do a search for Food and Friends with Larry at mytoba.ca or soundcloud.com or the iTunes store, and all the shows will come up for your listening and viewing pleasure. It's important to mention that Food and Friends is only available because of 680 CJOB and its advertisers. So please tune in to 680 CJOB or listen live at cjob.com. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. We were just talking off air about residential properties versus uh, uh, commercial properties. And the two, you're, you're starting to see mixed use. Is that, was that yeah, the term? We're very interested in mixed use development and intensification of our sites where, you know, it lowers the carbon footprint. Uh, people get to live closer to the center, closer to connected uh, activities and amenities that the city already has. And uh, we have... Uh, really been interested in that and been building a portfolio ready to launch, uh, hopefully in 2015, where you'll see some construction coming from us as well in that field. So so looking at a stretch on, I'm thinking it's on Taylor, Manitoba Hydro Building, over to the shopping mall, there's that Bing Epic Field that's been there a long time. Is that that one of your areas? It is. Uh, That's going to have, uh, on build-out, about a million square feet, and that's infill, uh, has all the green attributes of being infill inside. There's development on all sides of it for many years. And we plan to do high-rise development uh, behind Manitoba Hydro towards mm. Pemina Highway, uh, two or three high-rise structures, uh, mid-rise up on uh, Taylor Avenue near the Sobies. Uh, Walmart is under construction there, which... Uh, will open, I believe, in January of uh, 2015. Okay. Uh, we continue to talk to other uh, larger format retailers that will be able to serve a community that's being a little bit underserved, as well as some shop space, again, restaurants, and we hope to also build office buildings there, you know, uh, Class A office buildings with uh, underground parking and all the accoutrements that you would expect from, uh, you know, a 2015-style development. Now, I moved here the first time when I was in retail in 1984, 
and down Keniston, uh, Keniston, where there's lots of commercial development there. I remember looking at, at stores at that time because we were opening stores in my old business and looked at that area and there was a, you know, for lease sign there and land. And I'm thinking, who would build out there? And here we are a lot of years later, but that's an intense area now. There's a new housing development down there. So you, you must have a vision of saying, okay, this is what it's going to be one day and be able to say that there's going to be the development. Well, we acquired our Taylor Avenue properties. We started acquiring it about 20 years ago. Wow. And so we've owned some of that property for more than 20 years. And we felt that it could be something other than what it was, that it, uh, the trends that we saw in other places in North America would eventually come here. And certainly with the uh, expansive uh, development in our city in the last probably eight or ten years, uh, people have been realizing that those have been great places to live and work and play. And uh, we've, see, we've seen tremendous growth of private sector investment in the last ten years in Winnipeg. It's really been astounding. So if I had to ask you, uh, well, I will ask you, what's the number one challenge in your business today? Well, uh, entitlements, uh, you know, the process of uh, jumping through all the hoops to get things ready to go because we have such a short construction season. Mm. You know, a delay of a week or two or a meeting or two can cost a year, can cost construction inflation, and can cause uh, the tenants to decide that they would rather be in another city. Right. Because... Uh, our competitors are never the lot across the street or the one on the other side of town. Our competitors are Minneapolis and Calgary and any place else that they have budget and are able to open stores. So we want to go out and get the biggest share we can for Winnipeg and for Manitoba. Remember our Portage La Prairie roots. And we work at Brandon and Winkler and Portage and Selkirk, and those are very important communities to us as well. We've developed over a million feet in those communities in the last wow. uh, decade, and uh, we hope to continue doing that. And what would you say your biggest accomplishment has been? What do you, what do you hang your hat on as the big one? Well, we think Polo Park, uh, the, the, uh, the stadium expansion, and getting the first urban development here. You know, we're building a Target store that will open uh, in October, mid-October, I hope should be the date, and to have parking underneath. Now, we were able to accomplish that with the Superstore on Portage Avenue, and we were able to accomplish that where we have all the store on the second floor. Superstore is, is on grade with uh, basement parking, but this is going to have parking on the main floor, and we're hoping to bring tenants that haven't been to the market, new to the market, to keep the excitement going. Of course, and what better anchor than pull apart. And CGOB. <laughs> You're right. We'll be right back with Sandy Schindelman right after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. So I was in Portage La Prairie checking out some of the farms the other day, and I drove up. We have a farm on the island, and drove by the Mayfair, Mayfair Farms, absolutely, and drove by the Schindelman Aqua Aquatic Center. Yes. Wow, it's an amazing building. Well, uh, thank you. We are very fortunate to be able to make a contribution and uh, help in a small way of getting that built. And uh, they had a pool when I grew up there, an outdoor unheated pool that was mostly stocked with salamanders. <laughs> uh, it's a, such a fabulous, I've never been prouder of an accomplishment than to see our family's name and my father's legacy on that building and to see the wave pool and the water slide and so many people from every walk of life having a great time there on the island. It's fabulous. It's a fantastic area and, and you know, there's so much there. The golf course is there, our Mayfair Farms is there, as you were saying. And it's not actually even an island, is it? It's, it's kind of not really an island, is it? It's, it's I don't think it's an island. <laughs> I don't think it's an island. They name it an island. A, there's no, you know, there's a moat around it. <laughs> and uh, I guess it was an oxbow in the Assiniboine a couple of hundred years ago. I might not remember it, but maybe the Giffins would. Uh, wasn't around then. But there's a little zoo on the island. And, uh, of course, the tennis courts and the outdoor splash island. 18-hole uh, golf course. It's uh, fairgrounds. It's a, a great uh, and easy to get to right downtown. It's an amazing little place. We'll be right back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico, after we take this break for your 680 News, Sports and Weather.
Welcome back to Food and Friends. I want to thank all the people who took time to go to our website and vote for their favorite TV commercial audition. As you remember, we have children tried out for TV commercials that are going to be coming up soon. And you, too, can vote on the kids that are going to be on the TV commercials. We have 12 on our website. You can go there and vote every day. But today is the last day you have to 11.59 tonight to vote on your favorite audition. And the top four children that receive the most votes will appear in a TV commercial in a couple weeks out in Portage La Prairie, actually, out in our fields. So just a reminder, visit peakmarket.com, watch the 30-second screen test, and click on the Vote For Me button for your favorite child's audition, or you can even vote for more than one because we need four kids. Uh, you can make a difference in those kids' lives by going there to peakmarket.com before midnight tonight and voting. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. So we were talking off air about, you know, I still need my pieces of paper versus technology. And you, you were saying you're an instructor and have been for many years. Yes, since 1980, I've been an instructor uh, for a Chicago-based institute uh, teaching real estate development and site selection for retail. Oh, really? And uh, we were talking about the technology changes. And the first time I relied on an overhead projector was in Alabama, and the bulb burnt out. And I looked at the hotel manager, and uh, she looked at me, and didn't I have another one? I said, well, no, it's your projector. <laughs> and uh, moving through now, we have everybody online. Everybody is online for the courses. We're drawing real-time information uh, from the Internet, and but problems. You know, I don't, you know, you can have 30 students and uh, about 20 different computers. And can I do this with a Mac? And can I do that? And, of course, I wish I was more qualified to help. <laughs> Luckily, the neighbors, their, their classmates can usually rectify the problem. Right. As I walk slowly toward them. <laughs> so you have lots of initials after your name. C-C-I-M, S-I-R-I-O-R. CIPS, MRICS, what do all these things mean? Well, the institute I teach for is the CCIM Institute, which is a, a certification in commercial and investment real estate and uh, reasonably sophisticated uh, demographics, site selection criteria, uh, financial criteria, and uh, a volume as, as well of business try, um, requirements. The CIPS is from the National Association of Realtors. It's a certificate in international property as a specialist. So understanding, uh, dealing with incoming investors into places like Canada, United States, and outbound investment, and having a network as well as a system to make sure that they succeed as well in their endeavors. SIOR, and I think I might be the only one in the province, uh, is the Society of Industrial and Office Realtors. It came out of the war effort. In the Second World War, it was the go-to people in every community to find warehousing and manufacturing space for the war effort. Oh. And so it became a network of brokers who were uh, an old boys club at that time uh, that's evolved over the years with education and there's 2,500 odd members throughout the world. And uh, we network with each other, share best practices, etc. Now the final one, is uh, MRICS, that's the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. It's out of the UK, a uh, worldwide organization with many subspecialties ranging from surveying, construction management, quantity surveying, et cetera, and real estate practice. And uh, initially, you're, uh, when you qualify, you're a fellow of the institute and then, uh, pardon me, a, ma a member, now I'm a, a, a fellow, I'm an FRICS. You'll have to update your I'll have to update later. that, okay. <laughs> I'm a fellow now. So we, we said in the last half hour you were born in Portage La Prairie, you had a farm, you had a grocery store. Did you envision Abitoire. this? Did you oh, okay? Did you envision that you're gonna be in real estate, that you're gonna be teaching these courses and all these type of things back then? I didn't I did see myself as being in real estate sales. Uh, that was something I wanted to do. Uh, you didn't need to clean your shoes every time you uh, uh, had something to do. I did see myself as uh, being in that business. I didn't know how, my family was not in that business, but I did see myself in real estate. In terms of teaching, uh, absolutely not. Uh, you know, uh, I hadn't yet, uh, and still haven't yet uh, finished being a student, and I started to be a teacher, and I thought, it's an old saying that I found to be true, if you have any ego at all, the best way to learn is to teach. 
Because if you're going to teach, you better make sure you know what you're talking about. There's face-to-face -face, uh, with students who are relying on you to impart some information on uh, to them so they can pass an exam and get a certification. So I think it's been very good for me, good for my office, good for the people there, because we, uh, we certainly test material out on them. I guess so. So in your job and, and, and your office job, you're obviously dealing with the cities and the towns and the provinces, and I'm not sure if you do work in the states or not, but... And we do. You do as well? Okay, so lots of different jurisdictions you have to know, and I'm sure there's different rules in many of these areas. It's got to be quite a complicated process. Well, the main part of some of the education that we put on is to try and standardize it so that we're looking at similar types of data set. And uh, with the advent of the Internet, that's been very helpful. But in terms of the nuances, it really uh, proves the point that real estate is a local business. And you still need to have local expertise and local counsel uh, because there might be some things that you don't know from far away. We do try and make some skills that you can study things from afar, but there is uh, always some uh, local things that you should know. And the, the communities and cities and municipalities don't all work the same. Some are certainly uh, pro-development and jobs, and some are not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's ebbs and flows in that. And uh, when they're not, it makes the job very difficult. And that has to be challenging when you have a piece of property, you have someone that wants to come, and there's some hoops to go through, whether that's the United States or Canada. That, that's kind of not out of your control, but you have to allow for it, I guess. You have to allow for it, and uh, which means you certainly can't count your chickens because uh, other people without a financial stake uh, at all you know, get to opine on whether or not you succeed or your tenants succeed or the jobs get created. We'll be right back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico, after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please follow us on Twitter at Peak of the Market for recipes and Manitoba veggie crop updates. We have over 100,000 Twitter followers from all over the world, and we'd love to have you follow us too. Again, we're at Peak of the Market, or my Twitter account is at Larry McIntosh. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. So you were saying earlier that you have businesses in Canada, or you do business in Canada and the United States. Do you see a big difference between the two countries? Yeah, there is a big difference uh, in terms of regulation. I mean, we're not active in the uh, central business district of Manhattan or Boston or Miami or any of those places. But in terms of the ex-suburban, suburban, and where people live uh, business, uh, it's usually more straightforward and um, uh, there's a little less nuance to it. There's a little less politics to it, to the development business. Although okay. there's politics to the development business everywhere in the world, I'm, I'm told but a little less. And we also work a little bit in Europe where there's a little more. Oh, little Europe more as well. Regulation. Oh, yes. Wow. So, so you, when you're talking to, uh, say, uh, stores, you do a lot of stores, whether that's uh, some of the big box stores or whatever, they want to come to town, do you try and find properties for them or you try and entice them because you have property or how does it all work? Our business is broken down by uh, a segment and, and different individuals who specialize in tenant rep. And that is uh, the needs of a tenant and finding a site for that tenant. Uh, then there's another part of our business, and in fact, uh, other people working in it, which is a site in search of a use. So sometimes we start from the site working out to see what the connectivity is, what the, what the market is, where there's a market gap for a certain type of product, and then go out to convince the people to come to Winnipeg and Manitoba to, um, to make that investment and to hire people and to operate that, provide that good or service. So it works both ways. Not always the site that you have is the best one uh, for the tenant. And at the end of the day, when a tenant can look back and say, you know, my best stores are the ones I did with these fellows or this person, uh, that is a major victory. You know, our, our, you know, our highest sales per square foot are with them. And so... They're not necessarily always going to be in your developments. We do have a lot of big developments underway. We have, I think, a 5 million square foot pipeline uh, ranging from Red River X to Kildonan Place to Polo Park to 
the one we talked about earlier on Taylor Avenue, right. some sizable uh, development. Portia Prairie, we have a sizable development. Uh, Selkirk, we're expanding our development with a new hotel on site. Uh, we think that uh, we, we found some great locations that have the appurtenances to be successful, and by bringing the co-tenancies together to create the traffic, we want everyone to succeed. And that, that that's an interesting thing because you know we've had yes Winnipeg on the on the show and the economic development right they're trying to attract businesses here but you're kind of almost doing that too you're trying to get some retailers that may not be here or getting additional and locations or we are trying to expand business here every day there's uh, a dozen people in our office uh, making calls uh, dealing electronically and social media. Uh, working with our connections to try and expand the tax base and all the communities we work in every day. That's what I do. So Shelly wants to get a DSW show, shoe store here. That's her big thing. So she would. that's her request, if you could get one of those here. Well, They're not uh, anywhere in Canada. So. Right. Uh, DSW uh, is coming to Canada. Oh. They have done a deal with uh, Town Shoes, and uh, they will be coming across Canada, and we're very hopeful they'll come here. Wow. Well, that, that's great news in one way. Another that's way, we're going to spend a lot of money on shoes. Yeah, and I'm right. bad for shoes, too. I'm not blaming Shelly. <laughs> we're both bad. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get one and maybe even close to here so you could walk there. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, that's that's great news. I'm glad you came in today. That that alone is worth it. Wow, that's very exciting. Yes, it's, it's worth it for Shelly. And uh, we told them about Shelly because that's the local information that they might not have. They heard about Shelly. They already heard of her from their other locations. And so now we're talking about a store much larger than initially planned. Wow. So, so are there any, anything new coming to, the, to Winnipeg that you can share with us? I know a lot of things will be confidential. Is there anything? Well, I think you're going to see uh, outlet stores coming. Uh, there's an outlet mall planned. Uh, we're looking at bringing some outlet stores in, certainly, which uh, I think the consumers will find favorably. Uh, we think there's going to be more grocery chains after the amalgamations, uh, et cetera. There'll be uh, some more of that. And we also find something that is exciting that we're seeing a lot in other uh, larger centers is a, a growth of independence, especially in restaurants where they're kind of chef-inspired and they're able to do volume and they're able to be profitable, which didn't used to be the case. So I think we'll see restaurant expansion for both those that are here, those that are just coming, and more, and uh, certainly, you know, the Bay getting a shot in the arm and Saks and all of those stores that are new to Canada will eventually get them in our market. And I think uh, it'll really slow down our retail leakage. Are you excited about the next five years? Yes, because of the momentum, because of the sites that already exist. Uh, I certainly think we can see out five or seven years, and uh, I'm excited about all of those years. And you're, you're talking earlier about challenges, and you were talking earlier about some of the great accomplishments, it being the Target store that's right next door to CJOB, which, and, and many centers, uh, talking about Target's parking on the main level and then stores upstairs, many centers that's not unusual, but it's kind of unusual for the prairies. You don't see a it lot is. of that. It is. Uh, you know, it's got quite a cost to it, and it's mm -hmm. going to be quite a comfort for anyone who remembers this past winter. <laughs> right. And uh, I certainly do. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, lots of great retailers. Walmart is uh, coming with, you know, a beautiful store, the biggest box they make now in Canada. They're under construction on, on Taylor Avenue at Grant Park Pavilions. And they're going to attract a lot of other retail, a lot of other traffic. It's infill. It's inside. Uh, you know, the, our project at Red River X, we've got the racetrack. We've got the auto mall. We've got some growth in Headingley. Uh, certainly, they haven't had anything new there for a long time. It's their turn. Transcona is going to get more. Uh, I think it's all good. We'll be right back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindigo, after we take this break for your CJOB Cottage Country weather update. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me next Saturday when my guest will be Deborah Green, General Manager of Polo Park Shopping Centre. And Deborah is going to tell us about all the exciting things that are happening at Polo Park. My guest today has been Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. You know, it's always fun having you on the show and, and talking about development and all, all. Your life is just interesting. 
Well, we have a lot of fun, and you're going to learn a lot from Deborah. There's, we've got such so many exciting things happening right next door here, and she's at the forefront of it, and she's going to really be able to enlighten uh, Winnipeg on some new shopping experiences, some new mall experiences. And, and there's a mall we were talking earlier about redeveloping things. They had a Safeway in there one time that moved, and then they had a Zellers in there that obviously closed, and that's a lot of uh, d- difficult space to reuse, but they're doing a lot of things over there. Probably... What they're spending to renovate and re-merchandise the Zellers is probably approaches what it cost them to build the mall initially <laughs> in the late 50s. Thanks, Sandy, for being on Food of Friends. Thank you, Larry, for having me. Take care, and please, don't forget to eat your veggies. <laughs>